Hey everybody, back on the uh, F-Head again while well, I got a little bit of time this morning. And uh, <clears throat> what I have in here right now is a valve seat cutter. And you know we've got all the stitching pins on this side of the seat. So they have to be milled out perfectly. And we're going to clean up the walls and just tickle the depth just a little bit. Uh, so the new seat goes down in there, and once the seat's in there, we can head over to the milling machine and deck the block. So, a lot of steps to get uh, everything just so. But um, <clears throat> we've got to mill this, and I'm going to show you my setup here. Let's see if I can zoom out without losing it. Okay, I do the seat milling with a Milwaukee mag drill um, you know there's special uh, valve seat machines and uh, there's a bunch of ways of doing it you could just m mock it up in your milling machine if you have the height I mean is it with the tall block and then putting a cutter in there it'd be pretty close um, but this way here uh, works out pretty good uh, <clears throat> Now what we have inside the guide, that's why we need to put the guides in first. We have, um, we have our pilot here. This is uh, a tapered 374 thousandths um, to go in our guide. Remember we ream those. And this shank here is 375. And we have a uh, 375 perfect hole there. And when you're getting set up you need to make sure that that everything comes down perfectly uh, that uh, pilot there is going to keep everything centered and um, it's hard to kind of freehand these you got to have the pilot in there uh, you got to have a very rigid setup and uh, just make sure that it slides up and down easily and we're just very very easily going to feed it in there uh, we've got a big hump here we don't want to tear up these carbide cutters so we're just going to go down nice and easy uh, not going to spin terribly terribly fast I, I can adjust this to uh, I got high and low range and, and can adjust it to to any speed I need um, we're going to go nice and easy and we're just going to mill out that area so uh, I think I'm in a good spot here uh, we'll get uh, some uh, eye protection on and go for it so I'll be right back with you and we'll mill that seat. Okay guys, I put a little bit of oil on our taper pilot there so we don't want to we don't want to gall anything up between our pilot and our cutter here. So I got a little bit of light oil on there. We're going to turn on the machine and we're going to lightly mill this seat. Okay, we're starting to cut nice. Uh, I'm just going to pick it up and down uh, every so often and just when we take the rust off the bottom shoulder there, we're going to stop. Um, but it's hard to see so I'm just going to feed in a little bit, pick it up, check it and, and go back in again. Uh, we don't want to go too deep. We don't want that seat too deep in there. Okay guys, there's the seat all milled. This is our stitching pin and that uh, seat cutter cut a perfectly flat bottom there and we just started just started removing the rust around that whole thing. So that is what a um, seat cutting tool looks like. 
and if you have to sometimes recondition your seat or get a little bit of junk out of there um, the exhaust seats are uh, the cutter is a one inch 562 that's one and nine sixteenths uh, standard size um, there's no mystery on uh, uh, these these old engines it's a uh, standard size you could easily get those I'll put a link below on uh, where you can get your seat cutters if you need them uh, check it out and um, that's what it takes to mill a seat I've got this seat in the freezer and we'll chill that down and then we'll set it in and we'll finally be ready to deck this block so uh, let me get the seat out in a little bit and uh, I'll show you that being uh, knocked in there. Okay guys, we're getting ready to put that seat in there. And because I have fixed a crack here and sometimes the seats want to spread the material, I'm going to put a little bit of sealer in here. This is the same sealer I put on the, uh, on the crack pins. And sometimes it can be tricky when you repair a valve seat because, um, you know, it's a press fit. So a little bit of sealer on there isn't going to hurt anything. And we'll just get it all around there. And this is the area right here that I'm worried about because that's where our uh, locking pins are. But this sealer, if anything, <coughs> wants to open up a little bit. This sealer should uh, fix any pinholes or anything like that. We pressure tested it to 35, no problem. We're going to pressure test it again after the seat is in just to make sure we did not spread anything too far and cause uh, some separation. So uh, it's going to be quick. I'm going to have to run to the freezer, grab the seat, come back, and knock it right in. We're going to knock it in with uh, one of these drivers. Uh, you see me use these on a lot of different things. Uh, they're super handy. And if you don't have the right size, you just spin something up on the lathe uh, with a step in it that fits on the inside of the seat. And uh, this surface right here uh, will bang the seat right in. You want to put that in nice and square. <clears throat> they're very easy to break, especially when they're cold like this. Uh, if you get them off just a little bit, uh, they crack easily, and then you got to start again. So take your time with these. Um, drive them in nice and square, and you shouldn't have any trouble. So I'm going to grab a seat and be right back with you. Now we're starting to get sideways. Okay, there is our seat installed, and <clears throat> had to go kind of quick with that, but um, it's in, and now we can uh, deck the block. Uh, let me just grab another seat and show you. There is a right and a wrong way to put these in. Let me go grab another seat and just show you uh, which side needs to be up. Okay, I've got another seat right here. Um, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but this edge right here is rounded, and this edge is very sharp and square. Uh, the rounded portion of the seat goes down, and the square edge is up. Uh, there is a top and a bottom to these. Uh, so that rounded edge, uh, hope you can see that, that rounded edge goes down. And you'll see it clearly. When you get your new seats, you'll see it when they're in your hands. But uh, just make sure you put that rounded edge down. That's how they're supposed to be installed. Okay, um, I'll get the cart. I will clean off the mill. And I'll get the uh, large cutter head set up in there. And uh, we'll set this up uh, <clears throat> nice and true to the cutter. And take a light cut and see where we're at. So I will meet you back over at the milling machine. Okay guys, you've seen me mill some uh, blocks and heads before, 
Uh, this particular block we know was not flat. Uh, had highs and lows. Seemed like it was twisted a little bit, but uh, not real bad. So I got it uh, jigged up the best I can, uh, as flat as I can, and we're taking a light cut just to see where we are. It's about a half thousandth just to see what we got for highs and lows, and we'll just keep progressing on this slowly as I do with all my blocks, and uh, get it nice and flat, and I will let you know how much we take off, and um, we'll probably have to take three, four passes on this one. Uh, looks a little weird, but uh, we'll get there uh, just a little bit at a time, and uh, I'll show you the finished product. Okay guys, we cleaned up the entire surface at five thousandths, and that's the reason why I like to set my guides a little extra deep, between four and seven thousandths deep, because that's usually what it takes to mill a, mill a head. Uh, I mean a, a block. Um, so we are right at one inch down with our guides now and the entire block cleaned up nice. So we'll take this over to the bench and we'll pressure test it one more time after the milling to make sure all our pins are still good and now that the seats in there and uh, I'll pressure test this again and then we're ready to start boring. So, um, I'll meet you back over at the bench. Okay guys, just finishing up with our pressure test. And it passed with flying colors. So, I just had an old head gasket that I use for this. That's a heavy plate. Let me try and wiggle that off there. Okay. All right, I didn't torque it down like crazy, and um, we had a little bit of um, bubbling uh, around, you know, where air got in there. What I was really after was inside the seat here. Let me see if you can see that. Inside the seat, right in there, uh, is where I was concerned about because I had to get a, a pin on an angle in there and I couldn't pin it exactly as good as I wanted to. But, um, you know, from squirting uh, soap in there, uh, that's holding good all around the bottom of the seat. There's no leaks and that's what we were checking for. Um, like I say, this is just a junky old gasket. Uh, it's kind of beat up, uh, so it didn't seal exactly good, and I didn't torque it down to 70 foot-pounds or anything. I just put a little bit of light torque on there just so I could check this out, and this block is 100% okay now. And the next thing, I know it's been a while uh, getting to this point. The next thing we can do is either cut the seats. Uh, these, this one, this one, this one are originals. We'll cut this one from scratch and we can get the boring bar out and we can start boring this. Uh, this block is going 60 over because it's a wavy uh, 40 to 50 right now. So uh, I got some 60 over pistons. We're going to talk about pistons next time and we're going to talk about cutting the valve seats next time and uh, we got a lot to cover but we're finally at a point with this particular block where it's ready to have all the machine work done. Uh, it's been kind of a pain. We had a lot of little setbacks uh, with the crack in the seat uh, and then pressure testing it twice and milling the seat and then installing it and then finally decking it today. But um, this is ready for real machine work now. Boring, honing, and uh, whew, very soon we're going to see some assembly on this. So uh, I've got a few jobs coming in next week that I've got to get done. Uh, I've got an L head coming in for a full rebuild. Um, so naturally the paying jobs take uh, precedence over this particular build. Um, but I'm still going to show you the complete F head rebuild and uh, I may sneak an L head in there as well. So um, 
things are happening and uh, I'll show you what we're gonna do next and uh, then we'll call it quits on this one but uh, I'll be right back with you in just a minute okay guys next time we are gonna concentrate on this Van Norman boring bar and you see some of the uh, hold downs in the back and we'll go over the tool kit and I'll show you what uh, those pieces are used for in there and um, this is a Van Norman uh, with the, this is the uh, sucker outer this was used for uh, in in the vehicle block boring and there was a vacuum attachment you could use for it I don't use any of that uh, I don't even have any of that stuff I don't like boring while other parts are in the engine so we're just gonna use this as a straight boring bar and like I said I'll go over the toolkit and how I attach it to the engine I think I'm gonna need to put the engine on a engine stand uh, so I can show you guys better the top and the bottom setup. Um, a lot of guys don't like the original hold downs, but I've got some modified ones, and uh, I can show you how those work when we do the engine. But it's a little too high, and I can't get the camera underneath to show you the setup under there. So I'm going to put it on a stand. I'll get it on the uh, the lowest stand I have, so it's easier to put on and off the block, and, uh, and then I can sneak under there with the camera and show you what that's like. Uh, how it attaches so it's secure um, <clears throat> so that's what's going to happen next time uh, I've got some other things to finish up today so we will bore it next time and uh, maybe the time after that we'll get to the valve seats so uh, I get a lot of questions on specific things uh, I, I am showing the whole series uh, it's just taking some time so uh, the block is set for all the machine work now, and I'm going to get to every piece of it, um, you know, that, that a rebuild takes. So, uh, we'll move on to boring next, and then valve seats. So, uh, if there's any questions or anything like that, uh, between now and when the next video comes up, just shoot me a comment, and um, I'll let you know what's happening and when it's going to happen. So... Like I say, I've got a L head coming in, and I'll have to get working on that one right away, but um, I'll, I'll keep finishing this F head, and, uh, and then I'll get a test stand built, and uh, we'll fire it up, and we'll run it. But it's going to take a little bit, but hang in there with me, and I will show you the entire process, and um, thanks for watching today, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video.